bird strikes are surprisingly common in aviation, and they've been responsible for everything from engine shutdowns to emergency landings. With all the technology packed into modern aircraft, it's easy to wonder why something as simple as a mesh or grate isn't used to stop birds from getting sucked into engines. It seems like an obvious fix until you look a little closer. This question has been asked by passengers, engineers, and even pilots for decades. And the answer is more complicated than it sounds. So why haven't protective screens made it into commercial aircraft design? And what's actually being done instead? Let's find out. On a cold January morning in 2009, US Airways Flight 1549 took off from New York's LaGuardia Airport heading toward Charlotte. Less than two minutes into the flight, at an altitude of just under 3,000 feet, the Airbus A320 collided with a flock of migrating Canada geese. Each goose weighed around four kilograms, and they were sucked into both engines almost simultaneously. In an instant, the aircraft lost all engine thrust. What followed was an emergency landing in the Hudson River a rare successful ditching that saved all 155 people on board. The event became known as the Miracle on the Hudson. It was an outlier in terms of outcome, but not in cause. Bird strikes are incredibly common. According to the Federal Aviation Administration, over 14,000 bird strikes are reported annually in the United States alone. That number only reflects documented cases, Experts believe the real figure could be significantly higher, especially when accounting for incidents involving smaller private aircraft or those that cause only minor damage. These strikes cost the aviation industry an estimated $1.2 billion per year, globally in damages, delays, inspections, and replacements. Most bird strikes happen during takeoff or landing, when planes are flying at lower altitudes, the same airspace that many bird species naturally occupy. Airports have systems and strategies to monitor and mitigate wildlife activity, but avoiding every single bird is not realistic. For pilots, it's an ever-present hazard, and in worst-case scenarios, as Flight 1549 demonstrated, it can become a matter of life or death within seconds. So, if bird strikes are this frequent and potentially devastating, it's natural to ask, why don't jet engines come with some kind of protection on the front? The question sounds simple enough. And from a non-engineer's point of view, it might seem like an obvious fix. But the reality is far more complex and far more interesting. It's one of the most common suggestions people make when they hear about bird strikes. Why not just put a screen over the engine? Like a vacuum cleaner has a filter, or a car has a grill. At first glance, it seems like a simple and practical fix. A mesh barrier at the front of the engine could block birds from entering while still allowing air in, at least that's how it sounds in theory. But in practice, it's a very different story. Jet engines require a massive volume of uninterrupted airflow to function efficiently. Any obstruction, even a thin mesh, alters the airflow pattern. The smooth laminar flow that engines are designed for becomes turbulent, leading to pressure loss, increased drag, and a drop in engine performance. The engine has to work harder to compensate, which means more fuel burn and higher operational costs. Then there's the issue of speed. Commercial jetliners often cruise at around 500 to 600 miles per hour, and during takeoff, the airspeed into the engine can approach 800 miles per hour, or 1,287 kilometers per hour, relative to a bird flying in the opposite direction. If a bird hits a mesh at that speed, the force of impact can bend, break, or rip the mesh apart. Those broken pieces don't just fall away, they can get sucked into the engine, causing internal damage far worse than if the bird had entered alone. Former National Transportation Safety Board member John Goglia put it plainly, a mesh would hardly make a difference. In other words, even if you installed a barrier, it likely wouldn't be strong enough to stop a bird at those speeds. And even if it did, the damage to the barrier could turn it into a hazard of its own. That's why no commercial jet engine today uses a mesh or grate. 
the risk of introducing a new point of failure outweighs the potential benefits. The solution that seems intuitive from the outside doesn't hold up under the demands of real-world aviation. So, if mesh isn't the answer, what do engineers do instead? Modern aircraft, like the Boeing 777, are equipped with systems that help respond to real-time engine changes. If one engine begins producing less thrust, for example, due to bird ingestion, the system detects the imbalance and adjusts the other engine accordingly. Pilots also receive automatic alerts that help them make quick decisions. These engines are built to handle a certain level of disturbance while continuing to operate safely. But what if we're asking the wrong question altogether? Maybe it's not about protecting engines from birds, but about designing engines that can handle them. Let's take a closer look at why. When it comes to bird strikes, engineers often accept the hit, quite literally. Jet engines are surprisingly resilient machines. While they're not built to take on large birds at high speeds without consequences, they are designed with the expectation that birds will sometimes get pulled in. This isn't ideal, but it's something the engine can often handle without immediate catastrophic failure. The engine might sustain damage, it might shut down, but it's damage that the systems are designed to manage in a controlled way. The real problem comes when you introduce something artificial into that environment, like a broken piece of metal. If a mesh or grate were installed and failed during a strike, the broken metal fragments could be drawn into the compressor section of the engine. These parts spin at tens of thousands of revolutions per minute. Even a small piece of debris can start a chain reaction of damage that spreads through the entire engine core. This can lead to blade separation, sudden loss of thrust, or an engine fire. The consequences are much harder to predict and much more dangerous than ingesting a soft-bodied bird. Birds, for all their risks, are organic. They can be torn apart by the fan blades and usually don't have the density or structure to destroy the engine core in one hit. The engine still takes damage, especially to the fan blades and compressors but it tends to be a known and tested type of damage. Certification standards actually require that engines withstand a certain level of bird ingestion. Testing involves launching bird carcasses into engines at high speeds to simulate real scenarios. Manufacturers like GE, Rolls-Royce, and Pratt & Whitney design their engines with this in mind. Greats, on the other hand, introduce too many unknowns. If they fail, they don't behave predictably. Their rigidity and potential for fragmentation make them far more of a hazard than the bird they were meant to block. From an engineering standpoint, it's safer to design for something you can predict. And birds, as inconvenient as they are, fall into that category. Screens might be out, but that doesn't mean engineers have given up on prevention altogether. So what's actually being done, on the ground and in the air, to stop birds from getting near aircraft in the first place. Since shielding engines directly hasn't proven practical, most of the work to prevent bird strikes happens on the ground and in how flights are managed, not inside the engine itself. Airports play the most active role in bird strike prevention, using a mix of environmental control, monitoring technology, and active deterrence. Airports regularly adjust the landscape around runways to discourage birds from settling. That includes managing grass height, tall enough to deter small birds from feeding, but short enough to keep larger birds from nesting. Airports also work on controlling food sources by managing trash, water drainage, and even insect populations. If there's nothing to eat, birds are less likely to stay. Some airports also bring in trained falcons to scare off flocks naturally. There are also more technical tools in use. Sonic deterrence blast predator calls or distress sounds through loudspeakers to scare birds away. Laser systems sweep across runways to trigger birds' escape instincts. These methods are often automated and run throughout the day. In more advanced cases, Airports use radar systems to track bird movement in real time. 
These systems can detect flocks, predict their flight paths, and alert air traffic controllers and pilots to delay departures or reroute incoming aircraft. On the aircraft side, Boeing and other manufacturers offer specific flight procedures to reduce the risk or severity of bird strikes. One of the suggestions is descending with idle power when approaching bird-prone areas. This reduces noise and makes the aircraft less likely to startle birds into its path. Another guideline is to avoid extended low-altitude flight, particularly over lakes or wetlands. In some situations, Boeing even recommends that, if a strike seems unavoidable, pilots may be better off continuing to land rather than attempting a last-second climb or missed approach, since a full-power engine ingestion during a go-around could be more damaging than a glancing hit during descent. The FAA also requires commercial airports to have active wildlife hazard management programs. These programs include regular wildlife assessments, detailed strike reporting, and tailored action plans. Compliance is closely monitored, and funding for airport upgrades often depends on having these systems in place. So, what's your take on this? Should engineers keep pushing for new solutions, or is the current approach the best we've got? Let us know what you think in the comments. And if you enjoyed this breakdown, give the video a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more such deep dives. Until next time, stay curious and thanks for your time.